Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more GR2 content for you today. Uh, this was meant to be released yesterday, but uh, with the extra downtime and everything going on, I couldn't get onto the server when I needed to to record, so I have had to do it today instead. Either way, you do get it uh, this week, so there you go. Uh, we are going to go through the next in line of the series and it's the cruisers so we've got the build series and we're going to look at the cruisers today so there are only uh, four cruisers you have the tornado the centurion the fell hunter and the church uh each having more or less some form of dps role and two of them having a dps and support role um but yeah, so these are a very important ship. Not only are they extremely powerful in the early game when you can first grab hold of tornadoes, but they uh, fit in your endgame fleets. So in the archetype of fleets, uh, you have the triple carrier destroyer, but the more important ones are the carrier double battleship cruiser and the triple battleship cruiser. So these are your first ships that you can happily put all your resources into knowing full well that's any part of the game these are going to be around they're going to be in your end game fleets they're going to be great for wars and secondary fleets they'll be good in the um or the war into server thing which i can't remember at the top of my head at the moment but uh, yeah also so extremely important archetype of ships uh, it's a shame that there's only four to choose from. I would like to see more. Um, the End Myth uh, don't have one, and the SSA don't have one. It'd be cool to see them, especially because I know the End Myth ones exist. I've seen the AI using them within the uh, arena, so they're definitely around. I think you can see them in some of the special events that happen, and I think they might even be in uh, some of the... Uh, storyline so yeah it, it, the one that I'm talking of it kind of looks like this without the pointy bit more or less it does look a bit like that but it would be nice to see that but we don't have it either way so we're on S2 now we're on S2 the counts are friggin mess but we're on S2 due to the fact that I do have quite a few of these cruisers set up and ready to go so Let's start with the Tornado. I've got two builds for the Tornado. First off, uh, actually we'll do the other one first. This is the DPS style Tornado. Six guns, uh, snakes and cannons and gorse work really well here. Um, this back slot here, you can actually fit uh, Dustmaker if you reverse that round. Uh, it goes in quite nicely there. Yes, you do lose a gun off third, but you're gaining a uh, pretty hefty tactical there. Still leaving you two slots here for a transition device or thrusters. It's a very efficient build. It works extremely well. Uh, sub, as far as I'm aware for subs uh, on the cruisers, you're not looking for the cooldown sub, but you are looking for the crit rate, crit damage uh, instead bomb subsystem on the tornadoes anti-aircraft weapons it's a complete waste of your time ignore it plug-in wise as you can see i haven't got much in the warship features here we have damage to uavs missiles torpedoes increased by 50 percent as a warship feature it's a complete waste of time don't put anything into it but we do have projectile weapons pre penetrate um i can't remember what this goes up to it does go quite high though and uh, i think it's 50 percent or something might be higher very 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 strong this mixed with any of the projectile weapons snaking or gorse or rail guns for even more penetration you're gonna just ignore shields for the most part damage will not exceed 7.3 percent of durability it's got that really nice um steel barriers warship feature that all the federation ships have and uh, again very very good warship feature in my opinion it reduces the amount of damage you're taking from big powerhouse tacticals like dust makers and comet torpedoes the the ones that do all the damage in a single hit 
You probably want a better projectile uh, plug-in than this. I don't currently have one. Uh, ship durability, standard armor's probably your best bet. Creature armor can also work, but I think standard's probably better on a cruiser, just trying to get its base HP up as high as possible. Last two slots are utility. You can put more energy on here if you're against Ymir, or you can go mining with warship house, uh, well, warship warehouses and warship mining capacity increases with the mining drills definitely a way to go reforms really easy to get on here you can max this out no problem at all so just grab what you can and just keep farming until you've maxed out your tornado uh captain wise not princess leia uh, i think she's just a spare captain that i've got so she's got stuck on here uh captain wise early game if you've got jim stick him on here before you've got a monster works really well Obviously, switching him over to a monster later on is going to be more efficient, but if you got him early game, he fits nicely on a tornado. Other ones, I quite, because I tend to run support style cruisers, I tend to run things like Vincent here and Baron. Uh, this just gives them a lot more survivability, allows them to stay on the field a little bit longer, potentially getting a second command uh, CN off or something like that to boost the rest of your fleet and at that point it's really really efficient so again this is the basic setup so you can get six t3s on here quite happily you can easily fit your uh, movement module you can even get a little strike cn on here as well so it's helping the fleet out even more but yeah it's quite an efficient build um i can show you some damage Obviously, I don't have this ship maxed out or any of the weapons maxed out here, unfortunately. It's also not got a particularly strong um, a captain on here. I, I don't think uh, favors up at all. Actually, I don't think any of my favors uh, are high on this account. So you're going to see a lower damage number uh, for certain. These can easily push out a million plus damage, uh, which is pretty impressive for the cruiser um specifically this kind of build where it's got the six t3 weapons you can drop down to five like i said get a tactical uh, a dust maker or something on here you will probably get more damage out of that you will certainly get a higher alpha out of that which does make it quite efficient uh so you see here we're going to probably be around 250 maybe not even making that so low tiered weapon well they're all t3 but they are not upgraded whatsoever when you've got one of these maxed out you should easily be hitting 700,000 800,000 maxed out captains on top of that you should be pushing about a mil maybe a little bit higher i have seen some builds doing a little bit more than that uh, i'm not sure what they are this is snaking so it could be a mixed snaking gorse uh, snaking and gorse build or maybe a railgun fit of some description either way very important ship easy to get hold of 5355 five. will give you loads and loads of comms my second tornado build is this one here this is again it's not maxed out and this is the support style build that i'd like to run so we have a global command uh, on the front this is giving us massive amounts of buffs to all of our fleet i have a ct torpedo it's probably honestly better to have a dust maker in this position than the CT, but I do have a CT. I have a couple of gorse on here, because uh, I'm running crit rate, crit damage. The extra crit rate is going to help a little bit. PT gun to help itself and the rest of the fleet out with fragile. And we have a transition device just to move around a little bit better. Again, captains, like I said, I like Baron and I like Vincent on my cruisers. It keeps them alive a little bit longer. If I can get two or three uh, shots off this global command, because it can open that amount of times, all of these boss can like almost be active in an entire fight, and it's very difficult to deal with at that point. Plug-in wise, so this one is pretty much exactly the same. Two utility mounts, a projectile damage mount, uh, and a uh, sorry mount plug-in and a armor plugin. Again, I've got behind on this account. I don't log into it very much. Uh, again, there's not probably much point in showing the DPS here, but I can show you the, the Comet Torpedo, I guess, uh, going off. So we can have a little go. 
So we can jump in, boost, and launch a comet off, and there's a nice, you know, massive 70,000 damage off a single hit. You can get higher than that if you get right into it as well, which is quite nice. Again, Baron's not going to give us any bonuses here whatsoever as well, so you're pretty much seeing what you get. Uh, it's not a high damage build at all, but its lack of damage is there to increase the damage of the rest of your fleet. And uh, this global CN really does shine when it's buffing the, your other three ships as well. Saying that, it's hit 200,000, which isn't bad going considering it's not got maxed out weapons. We've not got a captain on here for damage or anything like that to sort of play around a little bit. So yeah, it's not bad. I quite like um, this version of Tornado over the other one. Uh, I've seen the other one used just as much, so it's up to you guys if you want to have a sort of support style or if you want to go for a more damage variant. Next up, we have a Fell Hunter. Um, I've pinched this build off Boom, so thanks for that. I actually don't know what the sub is. I have this one here. I think this might be the sub that you want. It's either this or it's going to be the um, cooling laser one, the super cooling, which gives you minus percent cooling as well as thermal damage. You're basically only doing thermal damage for the most part here with some decon rays. Uh, the heavy ray gun's not optimal in here, but it is able to go to tier three and it has thermal damage. So that's why I'm running it here as opposed to um, Etherix or anything like that. But yeah, I actually think if you're going for this, I think the cooldown might be more damage output. I'm not 100% certain. We run a shield on here. It's not necessary, but I quite like it. It does help a little bit. You could run any of the other things that go into a three slot here. I believe some of the uh, commands can. You can run an EMP, although this is not the right ship for it. It's very fragile. It gets blown up quite quickly if it's not moving. Ignore this bottom system entirely. This main gun with the cooling and everything is uh, just going to get you killed. As soon as a Fell Hunter stops moving for anything like firing its lasers, it's just going to die. So don't do it. Um, I run, uh, well, I run the propeller and a transition on here. This is due to the fact that once this thing going, it's very difficult to fa to kill. It's very fast. Uh, it's base movement speeds higher than all of the other cruisers. On top of the fact that you've got this laser weapon range increase, all of its lasers are going to be shooting further and further out. So it's in this circle miles away from everything. And I mean, this kind of build and setup uh, can kill things like monsters by itself just due to the fact that a monster can't catch it. It's faster than a monster baseline. If a monster transitions to jump onto it, you transition away. And you've got your thrusters just to even keep further range on everything. So it's a very powerful warship. It needs a specific build to work, something similar to this. Um, Decons aren't necessary, but they are the highest damage output, and you can fit three of them. So it's not a bad idea to try and go for this sort of setup at all. Uh, you could potentially drop this shield uh, rep off it for an extra T3 laser. I'll give you a little bit more damage output. You lose a little bit of survivability there, though. Reform Wise has got good reforms for laser thermal and EM damage, so potentially if we ever see purple or gold gamma rays, gamma rays might be the way to go on here. Uh, until that point though, decons are probably your best bet. Um, I like running IQ Director Katina on here, she sort of synergizes quite well with decons, doing basically the same thing. When the enemy's uh, hull is below 24%, I think it is, or 25%, uh, she'll increase the damage even further and so will the decons that's how they work as well decons because i know i'll probably get a few questions on this uh, in this video because people will see what well, how do you get decons and haven't seen my other videos they are from the particle ray gun if you upgrade this it goes to decon rays 
These are not tacticals, these are common weapons. Yes, they are full slot. Plug-in wise, laser damage per second. Uh, you probably want one of the, either the increased uh, shield damage laser. I think there is one that does that. So I don't think there's one that just straight up gives it more damage, uh, like a damage percent, but I think specifically against shields. Or probably more likely you want the uh, laser cooling uh, plug-in. That's probably your best bet for this shit. Sh um, armor, you're probably looking again for standard armor here. It's probably your best bet. And again, you have two utility slots to play with. It is quite energy hungry with decons, so increasing the energy regen might be uh, quite useful to you. It has attack, battleship, stern and flanks with 28% additional damage. And again, we spoke about the laser range increase by 140 yards. This increases the amount of distance that you're going to be keeping from your target. And this one's just going to be increasing the damage while you're on its sides and rear. This last warship feature increases the fleet that it's in for mining its uh, war warehouse capacity. This is easily the better way of trying to get over 12 hour um, mining times if that's what you want to do or you want to try and get to that 12 hour margin with as much mining capacity as possible so you can just stick them on pick them up the next day and you know stick them back on and it's the next day again so uh, yeah it's got good warship features it's got a good damage output because of decons again I think cooling might be the better uh, way to go here but we'll uh, have a quick show of that as well uh, you'll see how fast this thing is now. It's quite uh, crazy. So we can jump in quick just to get it going. See, it's, it's great. Nothing can shoot this. It should actually be further out than that as well. This is in quite close range. It will go further out if you don't jump in at the start then. Um, and it will really, really pack a lot of damage output very quickly. It's a little bit unfortunate that the... Um, pirate carrier that's in trials is already in decon's optimal damage range so you won't get a true reading necessarily uh, but what i have seen is again on par with a tornado doing about 1 million plus damage with maxed out captains and uh, max out weapons also decons can come in gold variety so there is another 15 percent uh, damage increase or roughly about 15 percent damage increase there that you can get so you're going to see about 650,000 here uh, which is pretty good going for a cruiser again this is not a perfectly optimal build like i said captain's nowhere near maxed and um, you can also uh, you know go for goals and stuff like that but yeah, good damage, and uh, definitely recommend a Fell Hunter. So, I don't believe I have this ship built. Uh, I do have it built, but I don't have anything on it. So, one of the other uh, cruisers is this one right here. This is the Church. Um, it's okay, I think, at best. So it has a rear missile crit rate and a front elite missile EM damage. But because it's got this weird little hole in the middle of it, it becomes very, very difficult to fit. Which is pretty unfortunate. The best I've seen fit for it is all pulse missiles to get as much bonuses out of that as you can. You can fit a pulse straight across here and one more across here which leaves you a pulse here and a pulse here, which are not on subsystems, but leaves you this nice little triangle here and here. Uh, and that gets you six pulse missiles, four of which are on subsystem boosters. Just to note, by the way, that this one does have two damaging specific four missiles, whereas the two I've just shown are a useless one and a damaging one. So this could potentially out damage both of those if pulse missiles were better, uh, to say the least, but um, I don't personally like them. Plugin wise, you want a missile plugin, a armor plugin, you'll have two utility slots there as well. You get frequency use of transition devices and, and decrease the cooldown of them. 
You also get missile specialization with missile durability increase by 60% and missile damage increase. Uh, emergency recharge when ship durability drops below 50%. Restore, I don't know what the max is, but you restore uh, some of your shields, which is actually quite nice. It makes it fairly tanky right until you fight monsters and other tornadoes which have penetration that makes this warship feature almost worthless. It is shield heavy in tank compared to the other ones. Um, I was saying that the Fell Hunter is pretty shield heavy in tank. Uh, it's not got the best armor. So yeah, I'm thinking uh, six pulse missiles on here is probably the way you want to go. It leaves you awkwardly with these odds like four one slots. Uh, so yeah, there is potential there that you maybe drop one of the T3 missiles for your shield and maybe the other one for uh, movement just so you can get and that will still leave you with four pulse missiles on subs i haven't really unfortunately played around with a church at all much um i sort of like its design but it's not amazing fell hunter's the best looking ship in the game uh yeah see look it's got like a cool bomber cockpit and it's got the, the split hull um anyway so yeah, it's 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 not a bad little shit. We have a Centurion here, but I'm not going to show it here. So uh, you're going to see a little cut here. We'll be right back. We're going to jump onto my other account uh, where I do have a Centurion built for you guys. Okay, we have switched account and here we go. This is my Centurion build. Doesn't look like much, but it is a support ship and that is almost certainly the only way to run it. So um, due to plugins, uh, sorry, warship features, you have this one right here. Allies buff duration increased by 65%. You don't actually need to go to tier eight, I don't think, if you max out your global C, and you might be able to leave this at seven. This gives me 100% uptime on a global CN. That means all of my ships in my fleet 22.5% thermal, kinetic, and EM resistances, as well as 36% crit rate, all of the time. It's a massive damage out uh, bonus for all of my ships. It's a massive tank bonus for all of my ships. I pair it with two fragiles to keep fragile up, giving my ships an extra 50% damage on crits. So yeah, it's it's nothing particularly special. Unfortunately, because it's got a weird mix of missiles and I believe lasers, I know torps, missiles and torps. So you've got these long range missiles and short range torps. Both of them have tracking issues. And yeah, so just don't fit it for that. Uh, you could probably potentially get a little bit more damage output than putting the PTs on here, but I just don't recommend it. Its other plugins are head damage reduced by 33%. This unfortunately uh, screws it over in auto battles where you don't get to control because then it goes and sits in frontal and sometimes your ships don't get buffed because they're nowhere near it because they're off nicely circling. This thing's stationary, looking at it, uh, enemy ships. So not particularly useful. I actually think this is probably the worst warship feature in the game on any ship. Uh, flank armor is better. Uh, anything that stops you moving is just not good. It also comes with a gold coating, as all Empire ships do, which reduces the chance of a normal state, which isn't particularly great or bad. Uh, Plugin-wise, if you're running this type of fit where we're mostly only bringing it just for the global CN buffs, just get ship durability. Uh, the standard armor is probably your best in slot here. The rest do not matter. Stick whatever you want there. I have got a projectile on here, and that is because I've got the PT guns, but it's not necessarily worth doing. You can open that up for something else if you'd rather. Uh, other than that, I do run my EMP on here, a transition device, uh, so this thing can buff. Then I transition EMP in arena, shuts all enemy lasers down. My ships are all buffed and they're ready to be jumped in straight after it. Nice little bait as well if they've got a gym monster because this will now take the entire gym monster barrage that he starts off with. Allowing when your monster jumps in, he's ready to go and doesn't take any of that damage. 
Um, you could potentially run this differently, maybe running one of the smaller uh, CNs like this one. Uh, yeah, a three slot one. And in that case, you are probably better trying to get some missiles and torps on here. I just don't think it's a particularly great fit for that kind of sh this kind of ship. Uh, with that sort of build, you are looking uh, though at uh, the buffer on the front here in a straight line. You have your missile across here, missile across here, torpedo here, and torpedo here. So it's two missiles, two torps. And it does leave you this slot here to go torps or missiles. So there is that option. It's a shame these don't match because this would get a double buff and this would make it a really powerful or potentially very powerful um, weapon platform for something else. If they was, were, these were both missiles or both torpedoes, it'd be better in that uh, situation. Uh, that does still leave you uh, slots here at the rear. So you've got these two and these two. So you can run a transition and potentially a... Um, I don't know what you'd run here, really. I mean, you could probably go for more movement speed and stick a propeller in here, but yeah. Not the best ship in the world, but it is very, very good for buffing your fleet. And yeah, definitely recommend it for that. Anyway, I believe that is all of the ships covered. Uh, so next week is the standard updates on Tuesday because we'll have the new event and stuff like that. Hoping to see some balance changes uh, soon again. I have messaged the devs saying missiles need a bit more damage. Torps are relatively okay, but could do with movement speed. And lasers need more damage. So maybe, maybe we'll see something next week. Nor uh, I say that, but it took him like two months to work that out last time. But either way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and click that bell icon if you want notifications and yeah next week update I may try and get one of these out over the week as well so it's the battleships next the battleships are going to be a longer one because we have it, six battleships to cover rather than just four ships so we have the fog We've got the fog the legion the monster the arbitrator uh, the unicorn. We get to cover the unicorn next week, guys. Yes. <laughs> Ten minutes of me ranting on how this is a terrible ship. And the EPOS. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.